Chapter 13 Helen had the set of keys to his place he had once given Bella. They got more use in Helen's hands. He kissed her on the forehead and was out like usual by 6 a.m. the following morning. On his bike, on a couple hours sleep, and a whiskey sour stomach to blow leaves in the suburbs. Odd jobs, odd under the table jobs. What would he do without them? He lay on his back in the afternoon, head resting on his old courier bag, eyes ascending the dark tower to the sky, sears burning down with the sun, and he fell asleep and dreamt. He was in a bar trying to connect with strangers who looked at him like he was the dirt under their fingernails, and there was dirt under their fingernails, and their fingernails were long. He walked into the wide hall that led to the back bar, and there was a bed at ground level on which he lay down. He lifted his head to see his feet suspended beyond the foot of the bed, and was suddenly ten years old lying on that bed. There was a woman, she was upset, and she threw something across the hall past him and a wall that blocked his view of the back room. There were a couple men back there, he could tell by their heavy footfalls and they did not appear from the shadow made by the wall. The hall was better lit than both rooms, but he went unnoticed on the bed. This was no bar. This was Bella's apartment. He could tell by the way she had hurled something large and heavy past him once. He was frightened because he was too young to know what was happening. The men seemed to be scared. Then he heard one of them cursing, but could not make out the curses. Bella was making a statement, it seemed. They tried to outdo her with strong, low voices. Her statement was heavily physical, and she was not without words. He couldn't see any of them, but they weren't strangers to him. If you love me, he heard her cry. You'll leave me alone, all of you. Go on, out of my house.